Welcome in, y'all. Tech Sags Rewind presented by Yeti. We got the fan show guys here, Matt Browning, Roy May. Uh, gentlemen, what was your favorite part of the show today? You did a good job. We're oh, proud me? of you. Yeah. I, uh, you did it. You wow. did a fantastic you did, you did, job. You really did. And, and I, I sound like a broken record, but every time Aaron Torres comes on, I, I, I love his segments um, just because I think he's so brutally honest in his opinions, and his opinions are educated. So, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then, man, the black box. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, your, what was your favorite part of the show? The fan show, us. Fan show. <laughs> Me and Roy. Me and Roy are the best part of this show. That's, right on. That's just like your opinion, man. Yeah, that's like my opinion <laughs> or whatever, man. Well, on the rewind today, we had our 22nd player in our 23 and 23, Layden Robinson. Had uh, Dr. McGee on, joined me and OB. Had Aaron Dr. Torres, McGee. so check that out. And uh, former Texas A&M and NFL offensive lineman, Lewis Cheek. Checked in with him. All that and more here on the rewind. I like Layden Robinson as a player. I think he can be a lot better than he was last year. Uh, and that may, again, I, I'll say this about Layden Robinson, too. He has had nagging injuries, and sometimes they're more serious than that, and he's played through it. He's a tough guy. He's a strong guy. He's a smart guy. But there was some confusion last year. And, I, and I'll say this. If they iron out that confusion, uh, he's as good as anybody. So, like I mentioned, he's played in 34 games in his career. How how vital is that for the entire offensive line, just having that solid yeah. key piece that you know you have? Well, I think everybody needs to uh, – uh, I think the experience benefits everybody, mm -hmm. right? And uh, every, the, the more your offensive linemen play, the better they get. I always go back to 2020. When you break it down, except for Kenyon Green, and to some extent, Dan Moore, everybody else was, was pretty good. But it wasn't like these guys were big-time NFL prospects. But they were outstanding. They knew every, where they were supposed to be. They knew who they were supposed to pick up because they had all played for like three or four years, right? There was a lot of experience. They knew what they were seeing, and they were in their second year under that offensive line coach like they are this year. You give me guys who are talented and athletic and strong – and then give them experience, and I think you can expect to see a much better offensive line. So, and I, along those lines, I think you'll see, especially if he stays healthy. Yeah, I think you'll see a much better Layden Robinson. And I think another thing I like about that, I love, I love the fact that Layden Robinson stood out and said, "I didn't play to the standards that I set to yeah. myself." A guy that. There's so many people these days that don't want to hold themselves personally accountable. And the guy says, who calls his own self out, that's a guy that I will expect to see better because he acknowledges, hey, this is where, you know, I wasn't as good as I can be. So a lot of guys come out and say, now I've got to prove myself, not to 100,000 people in Kyle Field, I've got to prove myself to myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a whole bunch of NFL scouts as well. Yeah. That doesn't hurt. And kind of rehashing what you and uh, Dalton were talking about yesterday, kind of this team's success, or at least offensively, kind of boils down to that offensive <laughs> line as a unit, right? If it's a good offensive line mm -hmm. with the uh, skill positions, talent they have, I think they can be a, a, a really, you know, productive offense. If it's a outstanding offensive line, if it – is anything like it was in 2020, I think you're going to see an explosive offense with a lot of, you know, two and three touchdown, you know, play drives. As far as playing in good environments, that's a hard one. When you played against the Cardinals, where was that stadium then? Was that the old Sun Devil Stadium? No, no. they were, were they were in the, the desert. In the in the Jiffy Pop popcorn. Right in the Great Recession. So when we were driving to the the stadium, I remember like all these buildings were just vacant and dead. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they got hit the like one of the hardest states as far as, you know, the uh the mortgage bubble and everything else. And so that was uh it was a weird deal. But the, the stadium was blah. The field was so hard. You know, they have those trays. It hurts. Like it's it's kind of like the Texans field in that regard. It was not the field wasn't near as nice what it, as what it looks on TV for sure. Um, I, you know, this is a hard question though. The worst stadiums to play, like from a field perspective, sure, Oakland. Sure, we'll go there. Yeah, check that one off. That yeah. was awful. The well, baseball field there anymore. Exactly. Th thank goodness that place was. Jared was mentioning that earlier. Okay. How weird it must be to be running out for a pass and you're uh, you're basically running into the infield dirt exactly 
it's not it's gotta hurt to be ca- uh, tackled on too because you're just yeah, sliding with you know no sleeves on or something on that dirt but it's kind of hard to get your footing honestly like it yeah. wasn't wasn't near as good uh, the worst environments to play as an opposing player philadelphia and texas tech very similar in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by worse? Just the the host, hostility, hostility. Of it all? You never know what's going to happen. What's going to be thrown at you? Uh, unless yeah. it's thrown at you, though. I mean, did, <laughs> as a player, you don't get affected by you know, fans being loud. It's loud everywhere, right? True, but I think it's some of the stuff like tr- traveling to the game. I remember in Philadelphia, everybody. It's universal there. They're going to tell you you're number one, right, with mm-hmm. a different finger, but. <laughs> They spray paint buses. They, I remember batteries, Kool Aid at, at Texas Tech. There's lots of stories, you know, fish on the bus. Uh, you just never knew what could happen. Um, Philadelphia is pretty rough, too. Always f- worried about being on the wrong end of a, a gang fight, mm-hmm. honestly. You know what I mean? Uh, <clears throat> but best environment, this is a hard one because we be- played back in the Big 12 days. And yeah, I'm, that's. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, a place that was tough to Stillwater, even though it didn't hold as many people because it was so loud and they had those annoying um, those paddles. paddles. Yeah. God, those things are loud. And they are and they get offensive linemen jumpy because they're like, ah, is that hut mm-hmm. or is that a... Um, I, I like playing at Texas, honestly. You know, because it was... I grew up in the shadow of Austin, not mm-hmm. because it was a great environment. Well, but um, it probably was a great environment when you are playing there. Yeah, that was fun. Right, because it was A and N, the rivalry but, game, and you know, I, 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 and I don't mean to be cracking on Texas, but I covered a lot of games over there, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, if it's a big game, it's it, it, it's what you'd expect. It's a great environment, but if it's somebody that they think they're going to win, you know, they just come in there and it's like, all right, um, yeah, we're here, and there's a game going on, but yeah, nine eleven. Yeah. So post nine eleven. Um, Cowboys playing in New York against the Giants. I remember that game on, uh, I think it was the 10-year anniversary, Mm -hmm. 9-11. That game, I was, it it was was a really neat environment, but I was also, I get really anxious in those types of moments, right, where you have kind of a lack of control and you're always nervous about, I mean, if you're a terrorist, this is the prime place to be. Do you think the Big 12 is Texas's to lose? And if they don't, you know, pull that off this year. What does that mean for them heading into the SEC in 2024? Yeah, this is kind of one of my big takes going into the season. And it's not because I'm on Texas, you know, the Aggies radio station. I don't get the Texas hype. On some level, I do. But the hype is based on a couple things. One, people will say, well, you know, they have the best roster in the, the Big 12. They probably had either number one or number two best roster every year since the Big 12 started, and they haven't won a Big 12 title since 2009. So, you know, I mean, just think about it from this perspective. Uh, Baylor has won two different conference championships under two different coaches, if memory serves me correct. Uh, Kansas State has won two different conference championships under two different coaches since the last time Texas won a conference championship. So that's one. And then, you know, what, what I keep going back to is in, in football at any level, do you trust the coach? Do you trust the quarterback? Well, Steve Sarkeesian has never won more than eight games in a regular season, nine games if you include a bowl game, at any point in his career. And I keep saying it's not like he started at, you know, Grand Valley State or, you know, Eastern Washington. He's he's coached at Washington, USC, and Texas, and he's never won more than eight regular season games. So there's that element to it. Um, And then do you trust Quinn Ewers? Listen, everybody remembers that first half against Alabama, the guy completed like 58% of his passes uh, on the season. He came back and he wasn't good. Was it the injury? Was it not the injury? I don't know, but I need to see a little bit more before I'm buying into them as a favorite. So that's a long-winded way of me saying I I don't believe in them. Um, And then I think going into the SEC, listen, they knew what they were signing up for. It's going to be tough. I don't think there'll be anything close to the favorite going into next year uh, with likely Arch Manning probably as the starting quarterback. So, I could be dead wrong in this one. Ewers obviously has the talent, um, but I, I, I haven't seen it from the coach and the quarterback in any meaningful way, and until I do that, it's hard for me to trust him. You know, you played in some big-time Cotton Bowls as well, three times against Notre Dame, Ohio State, and Auburn. Just how special were those games to you, yeah. and what did it mean to play, play in on a big stage like that? 
very, uh, you know, played against guys uh, that I ended up playing against in the NFL. Uh, you know, that that Auburn game was so powerful for for us in a lot of ways. You know, that was that season that we started. It's ironic we start with with Alabama mm-hmm. and then go play Auburn in the Cotton Bowl. And uh, Coach Die was, you know, really uh, important to Coach Carroll and, 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 you know, to beat him and, and for us to take that game when they had one of the best players to ever play the game in Bo Jackson. Well, they also had some great front people and, and uh, run a full back. They had some other players that could play. And, uh, you know, their left tackle played several years of 49ers. Um, they were just a deep, powerful team. It wasn't just Bo, but uh, Bo, our defense, played their heart out. And uh, I, every once in a while, I get a text from somebody saying, hey, that, that game, Lewis, is on uh, one of the ESPN channels. I've seen it play many times. It was a it was a big game, and it's cool. You know, it's it's pretty cool to see that come on. Yeah. On those little reruns, you know. So, yeah, no, that was a big deal. And, uh, uh, no, uh, the, the Ohio State game, I, I think, was, uh, was an eye opener for it. And I, and I won't make excuses. We lost, but we did have a bunch of guys had the flu. We, 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 uh, we wish we had that over again. Um, uh, but that was a big time game. And there's a defensive end that I played against who ended up being the first round draft choice. When I went to the Dolphins, you know, our same age. I was an eighth rounder. He was a first rounder. Eric Kumar, uh, they Chris Spillman. They had uh, uh, some Chris Carter. They had some players, and then, uh, it was uh, quite a game. And I hated losing it. And our, our senior year, we go back and play against yet another Heisman Trophy winner, Tim Brown, and and, and our guys. Our defense shut them down. Closing it out here on the Tech Tags Rewind, gentlemen. What do the people have to do? You know, I'm going to say it because you always get it wrong. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> like, subscribe, share, comment. And click that notification bell so you never miss another Tex Ags Rewind. You got fired. <laughs> fired. <laughs> fired. Thanks, y'all. David's back tomorrow.